everybody and welcome to Half the Brain, the podcast that has half the brain you do and half the facts you do. Uh, welcome to uh, what was going to be a chat about managers, uh, but then one Mr. Philip Brooks uh, decided uh, he had other ideas, so we uh, we decided we'd bring you the obituary of CM Punk and AEW from an <laughs> AEW sort of standpoint. But before we do that, let me tag in my tag team partner, uh, Mr. Ferry Tonk. Mr. Niall, how are we doing? Love you, all right? Good evening, yes, I'm very well, thank you. Good, good. What have you been watching this this month? Have you been watching much? Uh, just the old Botchermania stuff, really. <laughs> <laughs> keep it up with wrestling through Botchermania. I like it. That's how I keep up to date with WWE at the moment, to be, I'll, be, I'll be honest, you know. Uh, I don't uh, I don't watch any of it currently. I'm, I, I, I feel like I'm, I should be in an AA meeting. My name's Danny. And I've been four years clean of WWE. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and joining us this month uh, for uh, for the obituary of uh, one Mr. Philip Brooks is uh, Vitamin J, back once again with the Renegade Master. Uh, it's Vitamin J. Uh, Power to his... the people. Power to um, the people. How are you? Love you, all right? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, mate. Really good. good. Good, good. Quick, um, don't let let's not do a review of it. But me and you went to All In. You were uh, in different seats than myself. But yeah, yeah. As a spectacle, as an event, what did you think? What did you What did you think? Real good. Um, it's weird. Um, like I said it once on this. I the only time I've seen AEW live was in uh, Daly's place, and then yeah. Wembley Stadium. So that's my two sort of like things. And it was dead weird being. Um, seeing that many people for this, you know, like AEW shouldn't have eighty odd thousand at Wembley Stadium. No. It shouldn't happen. It's it's ridiculous, regardless of how it's happened or what people think of inflated numbers or deflated numbers or whatever it is nonsense. The the fact that they nearly filled Wembley Stadium is bizarre. It's mental. Well, the um, the, the, the figure they put out is a fact. You can look that up now. It is a true fact. Okay. So yeah, you know uh, that is the paid attendance, uh, the amount of people who paid tickets to go and see that. There were comps, Tony Khan said after, um, and there were obviously people working in the building, like WWE yeah, had yeah. to count and stuff like that as well. So <laughs> you know, but Tony didn't count those people; he counted the people who went through the turnstiles, which is how you should do it in my eyes. But there we go. <laughs> speaking of eyes. speaking of turnstiles, so me yeah. and my friend Craig went to we went together. And mm -hmm. um, we get up to the turnstiles at Wembley Stadium and there's queues and it's all wonderful. And at the front of my queue, everyone is taking like a sharp right and then going back around on themselves and then into the turnstile. And we're sort of, it's, it's kind of strange. And there was uh, four large piles of uh, vomit on the floor. Oh, and if you looked back towards one of the like, I don't know, like catering vans or whatever, mm -hmm. there was a guy in a luchador mask being tended to by St. John's finest. <laughs> the fuck's sake, right back. <laughs> so we got a little bit too excited <laughs> and couldn't keep it. I got a bit too carried away and missed her. Hey. He was all out. Um, it, yeah, it was. It, I just felt bad for him because he was in no state at all, but he was the saddest looking luchador I've ever seen. Oh. Oh, it's never nice to see a sad luchador. It's not. That's a it's fucking not. song title if ever about. <laughs> <laughs> you can have that one, Danny. Yeah, I'll tell. I'll, I'll next month. I'll uh, I'll introduce. <laughs> and we'll play that one on, on the way out. Uh, <laughs> as no, I, to be honest, I give him a thought. I thought it was a great day, a fantastic spectacle. Wembley ripped the uh, ass out of my wallet. Well done, Wembley, on that. Yeah. Um, was it four pounds, four ninety nine for a coke? Thanks it was for that. four pints for twenty eight quid. That was their deal, by the way. That was a deal. That was when they not that. So you know, like you're buying bulk and you knock some money off. Yeah, <laughs> that was their deal. That was the deal. Um, um I, I mean, AEW fared well. I, I've got a t shirt. I bought a t shirt. I've got on now. Bullet Club one. It cost nice. me thir thirty pounds for a t shirt. It was seventy five quid for a hoodie. Um, how much were they? The, the fifteen claim? pounds for some fingers. For some foam fingers, fifteen quid for fifteen pounds fingers. for fingers. But it, it's got words on it, so so yeah, it's got a claimed. It's a money, daddy claimed ones, isn't it? But I did see a, a knockoff stall outside 
with foam fingers that said professional wrestling number one. <laughs> yeah, and I, we, Martin Battle found that hilarious. So was, shout out to Battle for that one. We saw one as well, which was um, London Wrestling Federation. Oh, nice. And it was all bootleg stuff. And I was just like, oh, oh. It's, I, I was more tempted to buy that than anything else in the merch stand, to be honest. Yeah. But, if there had been a poster with a, a UK wrestling poster with a, a knockoff cane versus a doink, uh, <laughs> I'd have been all over that. I'd have been all over that. But yeah, I, I, yeah, all day. Me and me and producer Rick had a fantastic day, uh, and we said we're going back next year. So we're going back next year. So yeah, um, are you going to come next year now? Yeah, why not? I mean, looking at it, the tickets really weren't that expensive. I thought they'd be way more than yeah, what they were. were. I think we paid about hundred quid for ours, and we had uh, we were sat. To the as the as as the wrestlers came out at the entrance to their right, um, we could see sort of the backstage area, if you will. Um, oh, so, cool. uh, Powerhouse Hobbs was just sort of stood there the entire time, uh, watching. And uh, come on, Danny, of- keep cafe. We all know it is Gorilla. Oh, well, no, it wasn't Gorilla, <laughs> it, 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 oh, wasn't it, it? It was like to the side of Gorilla, oh, the holding yeah. So, where Sue came out of it's Baboon that's next to Gorilla, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the Baboon area. <laughs> kimchi position <laughs> kimchi yes. position um, yeah. before we start Danny um, yeah. I would like to offer a sincere apology to our listeners uh, for what we did last month and uh, rest assured we're never doing that again so you may remember that we did a special on uh, wrestlers who are no longer with us and pretty much as soon as that episode came out uh, we lost two of our own, didn't we? Yes, yes, we <laughs> did indeed. And uh, we lost Terry <laughs> Funk and Bray Wyatt. Uh, pretty much within 24 hours of us recording that episode. Well done, us. Uh, the yeah. Grim Reapers of Death uh, within the wrestling world, it would seem. Uh, so, yeah, we won't be touching that sub- subject ever again. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, on, on behalf of half the brain, I would also too like to apologize. <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> let's get to the let's get to the angry straight edge man in the room. Um, one Mister Philip Brooks, CM Punk, to the rest of the world has been fired. Has his contract terminated uh, recently with AEW due to backstage confrontations with the likes of Jack Perry and Tony Khan, the owner slash operator of AEW Professional Wrestling. Uh, So, uh, today we thought we'd give a bit of a, we'd talk about uh, what's happened and then have a look and see what will Philip Brooks be doing next? What will his legacy be, ultimately, do we think? So, (laughs) <laughs> Mr. Niall, Terry, what what do you make of all this? You know my stance on this. <laughs> I don't think he's I, what he did was just like anybody would be fired, no matter what. Absolutely. I think he's got something wrong with him. I think it's CTE, and I hope yeah. I'm proved right. But his behaviour, like when he came back originally, his first. You know, foray into into AEW, it was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, when he came back, and you know, the music hit. It took about three weeks for my goosebumps to subside after that. Too right. I stayed up till what two or three in the morning to watch that rampage. Uh, yeah. That first year run of his was 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 amazing. It was great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, um, the, 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 there was no bitching. It sort of like it felt a bit like wrestling Nirvana. Oh my god, this is amazing. This is great. And then. All out, all in. Sorry, all out. Last all out. year, all out. Twenty twenty two happened, and uh, that infamous, well, yeah, infamous sort of press conference after that, where that's where it started to slide and go downhill from there, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I had to watch that press twice, like once to see what he was saying, and the second time just for Tony's reactions as he was saying it. It's like. <laughs> it's just his eyes are darting all over the place looking for something um <laughs> pinpoint the moment his soul leaves his body can't you yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> what do you think jay what, what have you made what did you think well, of his first year at least anyway 
Um, I was actually having um surgery the day, uh, the day of um rampage. So I was in a hospital bed the morning after watching it on a on a on a stream right, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and I genuinely felt uh goosebumps. I felt uh happy. I felt euphoria. I was kind of like I missed. I missed him. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I missed what I, what I've come to realize over the last year and a bit is that I've missed what I thought he was. Yes. Rather than what he is, and the, the thing with CM Punk is that I've always I, I found him to be at first the one of the he was one of the first wrestlers that I ever met who was actually um, who who made me sort of feel like when we're talking. We've, we're you, you, I'm not just a person he wants money off or a fan he wants to bugger off so he can sell a t-shirt to. Hmm. Um, when I first met him, it was at, uh, uh, you guys said FWA, the yeah. Frontier Wrestling Alliance. They did a show in, um, I always forget this venue's name, but it's in London. And uh, <laughs> this venue, it's the venue where I, where I told you guys the story about me in uh, Rob Feinstein and other horrible people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You? Um, but this time he wasn't there. And uh, Punk wrestled Colt Cabana, um, which now seems like a <laughs> something that will never happen. Mm, but uh, it, was when yeah. that, it was when that match was being featured first on Ring of Honor. And, you know, they, they started sort of getting a name for themselves in the new indie thing after everything closed down and second, second city saints yes was that, them. That, that sort of area yeah 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 and after their match uh there was a six man sort of weapons match thing going on and i the, the brawl was going on all around the building and i saw cm punk and colt cabana at the table and i thought oh i'll skip a line here i'll just run over get get me belt signed and mm. then um, and then, you know, and, and I can go get a beer or something. And I walked over and he said to me, um, and I was like, oh, you know, love the match and everything. And we signed my belt. And he went, um, to be honest, mate, there's there's a match going on. And I really think you should watch it because, you know, they're, they're the ones here to watch it. And like, you know, he's, and he goes, you know, if you go to watch a band, it's rude to kind of go chatting up the headliners when the support acts are on sort of thing. That was right. the way he just sort of described it to me. Mm. And that made me then go, oh, when I'm in bands, that's what I should do. I should give everyone the attention. I shouldn't be a slacker about this. Sorry. Wrong podcast. Sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. Couldn't couldn't, res couldn't resist. It just popped into my head. Sorry. <laughs> this is about wrestling. And <laughs> but you know what I mean? And and I yeah. thought that I, I thought reasonable, reasonable, re reasonable push off kind of thing. Yeah. And then I mm. came back in the queue and I got in the queue and he brought me and my mate up to the front and went, here you go, and signed everything, didn't charge me a penny, was just a really nice guy, um, and let me cut the queue because I was because I was nice and walked away. He was nice and reciprocated by making it, like, giving me that that queue jump, essentially, that I wanted, but because yeah. I didn't treat it like some you know entitled idiot, he was really cool. And then I met him a couple more times in different um, indie shows in the UK before he ended up um, you know, going off to the to the WWE and stuff, and he's always he was always a nice guy, and I thought this guy's brilliant. But then, and then, so then, what happened in WWF happened, and I felt sympathy for him. You know, I, I heard the yeah. Colt Cabana podcast. I felt sympathy oh, yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But then, but then, like I said, over the last year and a half, I, I just I, I understand people being annoyed and frustrated with some of the childish stuff that does happen in that locker room. Hmm. Like there's there's incidents galore in there that, that that's been since the beginning. Sammy Guevara and the thing he said about uh, Sasha Banks, which I won't, won't repeat, for example. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Um, you know, the, the Bucks being like, you know, just childish people. Um, what Hangman did to set him, to set this whole thing in motion. It's it's a it, it's all little pathetic things that someone like him should know better like i i don't get that you don't get these reactions from jericho you don't get these reactions from sting you don't get no. these reactions from christian you don't get from jeff jarrett even well, though we hate him on this podcast well to be All fair right. jeff jarrett sting you know those guys are, are used to more like people bringing guns into the locker room or shitting yeah. in someone's bag 
Uh, so is Punk. Punk. Punk was in an era where Benoit and Randy Orton and them lot were all around being maniacs. Like he, he's they, they, I that think, as well. I think he's got a bit of, of sort of Benoit and Holly in him where he wants to sort of test young guys out and 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 do that sort of thing. He hasn't got that X pack mentality of let's shit in a guy's bag, uh, let's shit in his sandwich and make him eat it. Um, he's uh, <laughs> you know or or let's. Give these guys, let's give these guys an animal and watch them inject steroids into that animal, uh, and then be surprised when that animal dies. Um, Why do we watch this? I have no idea. Wait, what? Wait, the more we talk <laughs> about it, it, like away from the ring, there's no reason for us to watch it. If these were, if these were bands or politicians, we would write them off in seconds. Yeah, but they fake fight in underwear better than anyone, so you know. Yeah, one goes on backstage doesn't matter. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm not upset. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, th- that's genuinely how I feel about it. I'm disappointed. Yeah. I'm disappointed that some kid can, you know, m- make some Justin Timberlake reference into a camera, and that causes you to have such an epic mental breakdown that you start throwing fists at everyone. Part of me really wants them to make Jack Perry the real, real world champion. I think that would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> um when he comes back, you know, he's not got the FTW title anymore. He's wanting the title still. So he goes in the trash a la Hulk uh Hacksaw Jim Duggan in WCW and he finds the real world champion belt and tries to scrub off the X, but it doesn't really come off. So looks a bit <laughs> like a J or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea so much. But you know, I, it, I, you know, I get it. Look, but you work. I mean, he is working with people what, like, ten years younger than him, something like that. In, more in than case. probably in some cases. In some cases, more than yet. And in some cases, not. You know, Billy Gunn's still around. Jericho's yeah. there. Sting's there. There's a lot of veteran guys who are about in that locker room, and he's got you know. But like, you can't be talking to EVPs. You know, not even EVPs. Uh, Anyone. That, the the stuff with Chris Daniels, you know, the head of talent relations, he's had a go. He had a go at him at one point, and then Miro is supposed to have had a bit of a pop up. That, that one was apparently a joke between the two of them. Right, Miro, Miro's actually said that he was taking the mick out of the situation. He thought it was funny, right. so that was. But he has, but uh, he also did something to um, was it Ryan Nem- Nemeth? Yeah, Ryan Nemeth. Nemeth. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Where apparently he 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 tweeted something about punk being soft like five months ago so mm. obviously he had to have a go at him and i don't know the, the one thing that's weird to me right and this is this obviously i'm not in i'm not in the biz I'm not, i've never been backstage at one of these things but i have been backstage at an arena i've been at the sheffield arena doing filming and stuff back in a previous life right mm. and i've been around the backstage area where you know the hockey players are and where um, in this instance, but also where obviously the wrestlers would be. It's not that big back there. Right? No. It's not. So go back to when Hangman did his promo that set him off. Right? Yeah. And they and that, was, that was to his face though as well, wasn't it? That was the workers' yeah. rights line. Um, yeah, workers' exactly. rights. So he does yeah. the workers' rights line. Yeah. Yeah, he does the workers' rights line, which apparently alluded to Cole Cabana being moved from AEW to Ring of Honor. Then, he, they, do the, they obviously do the plan spot of how this is supposed to end because uh, Hangman decks him. Yeah, That's obviously the plan part of it. And then we cut to commercial and they go backstage. Am I, did, does Hangman perform like a Batman and just like, you know, throw a dust pedal down and just disappear? <laughs> or he sees a shot, horse-shaped smokes, like, <laughs> outline as, as he rides off into the night. Oh, that's um, beautiful. But no, but I, like, get, I, do you know what I mean? get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, because he, wait, he, he waits, he's, he's petty. He waited. He, he waited until yeah. after their match at the pay-per-view to do something about it, knowing and that Hangman wouldn't be there. Wouldn't, wasn't there. That's the, that's the big one. So he called Hangman out. Whilst he's like, whilst he's in the ring, and the Hangman's not even in the fucking building, and he knows this, and but you why know, not? Pay. Why not collar him and go, mate? What was that about? Yeah. Then Hangman will go. I heard this, and then Punk can go. Well, well not true. Oh, that's not true, true, or oh. it is true, and this is how it is, exactly. and da, da, da. and you you clear the water, and you go. But at the end, Punk, as the elder, goes. Look, what you did was unprofessional. We'll let it go this time. Don't do it again. 
<laughs> but don't do stuff like that in there in there you know i'm willing to do whatever and say whatever you've seen me do promos with mjf and everyone like you've seen you know, I've, I've let um the acclaimed come out and do a rap about you know my my serious issues with what happened at wwe and all that sort of stuff i'm fine with all that but don't do that and we'll be, and we'll get on swimmingly yeah but or instead if it's like it, if you're gonna do it clear it with me first yeah like oh, like, yeah. like what apparently these pros do yeah. and uh, and that that part of it just that that one little that one little isolated bit is the thing i just can't get my head around how it took them going through all that the match and at no point did it come up he was that angry about it that it it, it didn't bring it up once with him like i don't think what hangman did was good like i don't get me wrong i'm not i'm not saying that you know well, what hangman did i think happen, but i think at the same point on. you could say that you know did he get it did he did he fully land with him at that moment or did someone else have to point out to him you know after the fact actually if you think about that line there what hangman said is he talking about colt there or something because like i'm sure like, because that was the the, uh, the after the goosebumps went away from his initial in, in, introduction. My first thought was, "What's happening to Colt Cabana now?" Right, because he's on AEW TV, and now basically his mortal enemies here, and he's and he's a far bigger star. And no matter what, you know, Colt's going to go down the pecking order. And he he ended up doing. He ended up not being on telly anymore. He's he's he, and he still isn't really. Uh, he's on BTE and stuff like that, and he's been in Ring of Honor a bit, I think, but, you know, he's not on AEW TV. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, and 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 after the court case, and to be fair, before even before the court case, I would have, I am in Colt Cabana's corner. Uh, he played my band on his podcast twice, didn't have to do that, and he did it. So, there you go. so I will <laughs> always, and I've met him a couple of times, and he's a fucking lovely man. So, very nice. Uh, very nice. So, um, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think after the court case and in joining, there was always that sort of seed of something's going to happen here and it's going to be based around that. And it was interesting that his tirade at the press conference started off with Colt Cabana. You know, that's yeah. that's the root of the issue, I believe, with him. And that he has to work with Colt and he's being told time and time again, no, we're not firing or getting rid of him just because you 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 say so sort of thing. I think I really do think a lot of that's come from this, and he's got angry about that, and he's you know, and then all of a sudden, other people are pointing out to him actually, you know, that line might be about Paul or this line, or then this little reference that they've done on BTE might be about that. But, you know, like BTE's, it's a fifteen minute YouTube video they put out every week where it's just a travel log. It's nothing, you know, like why are you getting angry about what's been said on that? It's <sighs> Well that's 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 the that's it with me. Why are you getting mad at a bunch of children being petulant and silly and and messing about? It's the what's same the... thing that the Undertaker was saying. Why why is the Undertaker getting mad with the kids today in the locker room playing on their Xbox yeah. games and whatnot and rather than, you know, like he, he would do, playing dominoes with fucking Yoko Zuna and the and <laughs> the Godfather and uh drinking probably, whiskey and all that be, like... be, beating people up in bars. That's that's basically what they were doing, wasn't it? And the, <laughs> oh, Way better. <laughs> Way better. Oh, of course, of course. You know, yeah. like 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 we we're saying before, like you go through the laundry list of what some of our heroes have done, and yeah, you know, I, I, the, the fact that they're playing video games now and they're, you know, they, they've got their YouTube channels and their Twitch chats and they've travel vlogs and stuff. Good, yeah, good. <laughs> Stop uh, some yeah. committing crimes. Since, well, since he's been, <laughs> I've been watching a lot of stuff about Terry Funk and uh, and, and Japanese death matches and you know Big Japan. I've gone into a bit of a hole with watching Big Japan stuff, uh, and uh, oh, I just like every once in a while, yeah. But for your diet, twenty four seven, you can't be having light tubes <laughs> and stuff like that. Moxley's got to rein it in. Like he's you know, seriously he's got to go to sort of. ECW <laughs> Terry Funk soon rather you know be wearing the striped pants rather than just trying to be Onita and, and Funk from their Japanese heyday like he's got a really I'm telling you and Darby Allen's another one Darby Allen 
will not be able to walk, I don't think, by the time he's 40. But yeah, especially yeah. after that coffee match at all that. But any but yeah, just a, any of his matches to be fair. But there we go. There we go. <laughs> but so what do you reckon now? What do you reckon's next for him? He's done. Do you reckon? I, th- I think he's done. Um he'll probably get a few spots on like minor minor indies, but I think you you know, obviously your WWE easy TNAs won't go near him. Yeah. And that's saying something for TNA because they normally they're normally real quick to hoover up talent no matter what they've done. What's Phil Brooks doing in the impact zone? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I actually disagree slightly with you there, Niall, only because I think <laughs> WWE would have him back. Like that, in a for fucking the, instant. For the hype. I do think oh, they definitely. would. It, my, I don't think he'd go. I, I think he's... You no, know. nah, I think he would... I think he's got probably so much... Um, He, he clearly holds a grudge. He clearly can't let stuff go. No, no. Um, uh, well, apparently, this story about him uh, having a go at Regal. He had a pop yeah. at Regal, didn't he? Um, saying he was uh, Triple H's stooge. So, I mean... See, that's that's what makes me think it's something like CTE, because you've got to be some kind of... Not completely there to, to even consider that. Oh. Right. So, if you're, if you're somebody on the outside looking at it, weighing it up, right, would you be on... Uh, Regal side, who was a friend of Triple H, who helped him get through like drug rehab and brought him back to sort of like the peak of his wrestling fitness, gave him a lot of psychological help, uh, and then gave him a job training youngsters, which is something Regal wants to do. Or would you trust a petulant fucking old man <laughs> at this point? Because that's what <laughs> Mr. Brooks fucking sounds like in this argument, really does. Like, he's not stupid, like, can he not fucking talk to his mate? Is that what you're saying, Phil? Is that what we're saying here? It's like, I can't talk to your mate because it's Triple H, and apparently that's fucking stooge. Piss off. Well, that's that's kind of it, though, isn't it? It's like, that, it's all about these grudges and stuff that he holds. That's why I say I'm convinced if WWE backed up a truck full of cash to his house, he, he might do a little run. Like, he did that Fox show, didn't he, for a bit? Oh, yeah. But and that was that was all Fox, I think, and I think that was his way of like sticking it to WWE a little bit because they had no control over that. Fox, right. Fox came to him direct. Ah, right. Well, I still think that he, they would have him. I just don't know if he'd have them. I think he's done with wrestling. I, I can imagine him just being like, you know what, none of this is working out. I'm fed up. I'm done. I can't yeah. be asked anymore. And I, I wouldn't blame him because at the end of the day, you can't. If you're not happy, regardless of whether you know, regardless of whether we think that he's acted, you know, like a like an absolute twat or not, um, he's not happy, and he has to not be around that if he's not happy. And probably Tony Khan's done him a favor by firing him, to be honest. Yeah, because totally he's just going to get more miserable, and he's going to get more angry with people, and the next few months are going to be would have been terrible. Yeah, yeah, and it would have just gone, yeah, just gone and on. I oh, don't know. No. And to be fair, it seems to have gone down well because I mean they had a pay per view and a collision in Chicago. And if you're going to do it, a big balls on Tony Khan for firing him the day before they do a show and a, a pay per view <laughs> in, in Chicago. Um, but you know, if you're going to do this, you do it like this is the perfect city to do it in front of because all the heat you're going to get the most from this city and. I saw that video of him explaining to the crowd uh, at Collision what had happened and everything like that. And he got a lot of booze, but I think a lot of people listened to him as well and were taking in what he was saying. And by the end of it, he won them over a little bit. But in Chicago, you're not going to get a, you know. A it took him a while to stop pandering, though. It was after the pandering oh, that he, yeah. he took him over. Like when he was just going like, I love Illinois. It's lovely, yeah. eh? <laughs> like... I used to go to wrestling shows here. Uh, I was a kid here. Um, yeah, no, no one, you fired our hero, boy. <laughs> tell us, <laughs> tell us why you've done that. Oh, <laughs> makes sense. And also that rampage crowd, sorry, that collision crowd. Even sorry, uh, you fickle sods. Because the second the show started, boo, CM Punk, boo, Ricky Starks comes out. This guy was meant to face our boy. Yes, in the main event. Oh, Daniel Bryan's back. Ah, all's forgiven. Yay. Yay. Daniel Bryan's here. <laughs> rest of the, the sh- savior. Rest of the show, everyone was fine. They didn't even boo the Young Bucks when they came out the end. 
Yeah. Well, there was a slight, there was a, a slightly booze, but slight. yeah, slight. But that was about it. That was the only sort of mention of him uh, from the crowd, really, and uh, which was I thought was amazing. And the same yeah. at the pay per view, there wasn't anything really at the pay per view, um, which yeah. again I thought was was was, was good. Uh, so well done, everybody, for that. Well done for the restraint on that one. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, they're just done, and they're just fed up of his shit as well. I think and it doesn't I, matter know, anymore. I think by the sounds of it, yeah, he's lost Chicago, hasn't he? So you know, if you lose Chicago or like Philadelphia, you're in trouble. In it for for him as well. Yeah. You know that those are like his his home bases, if you will. So he's always going to be in trouble uh, if they're not supporting him. Um, what do you reckon then? Look, in ten years. What do we reckon his legacy will be? Definitely not Hall of Fame. Do you not think? I don't think he's going in. Not, no? on, not until... I, I think he's going to go in post-mortem. Yeah. To the Hall of Fame. Really? Cole Cabana on inducting. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like Hogan did to Macho Man and be like, we're all mates again now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, be- just before he died, he rang me up and we had a conversation. And we were me, friends. Michael Jackson, and this Make a Wish kid. We were yeah. in Wembley, and me and Macho made friends, and it was fine. <laughs> then Mr. T and ET rang me up. And we, we went for a car ride, and I joined Metallica <laughs> with um, iced tea. Sorry. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I, I agree with now. Now, I, I, I think his legacy is going to be looked at as. He was great. It's going to be like one of those bands that had like two good albums, and then all the the, le- the next ten were awful, and everyone just fondly remembers those two albums. And like, the, he's the Weezer of punk rock. Oh, sorry, of uh, pro wrestling. Even sorry, he's the Weezer of pro wrestling. He had two good albums. The rest have been tragic, and we'll just hope that there's we'll remember those two albums and yeah, nothing um, more be said. I like Weezer, but that's a very fucking fair comparison. <laughs> <laughs> They have one good song on each album, but and like Punk, he has one good moment in the, between the horrible things. But mm. Mm. Blue Album and Pink Tin of Gold, and that's Punk's, you know, two little bits. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good comparison. That yeah, he, he shone bright for a moment. Yeah, but uh, ultimately, everyone more thin of him. I mean, like we've touched on as well, he had all that goodwill. Um, from pretty much the end of his tenure with WWE, yeah. and like now he's just pissed it all up at up the wall. You kind of end up annoyingly agreeing with some of the things that Triple H was saying about him because mm. mm. he said, he, he, "I know that I know that it's written promo stuff, but like there's a line in one of them where he says something along like like yourself, you won't change here as long as you're the one that benefits." Yeah, and it feels like that was written a little bit like, you know, I'm having a bit of a needle here, but it's kind of weirdly enough, arts imitated life in the sense that that's exactly what he's like. Well, he showed himself to be like the, the, the promo Moxley did was it weak body, weak mind. Um, fragile ego, fragile ego, fragile mind, you know, um, uh, that seems prophetic now as well. Like, you know, um, at the time, you just thought he was uh, having a pop at him, but it, it turns out he was actually right. <laughs> it's like the whole, like going back to his WWE kind of exit, the whole probably month, two months leading up to Mania, well, leading up to the Rumble mm. for Mania 30. It's like, do you know what? You're absolutely right. Batista can fuck off. Yeah. B- Batista's got no business here. On two fronts, the fact that the yes movement was like full pelt then as well. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. you kind of felt that if Punk, if if Batista hadn't come back, he'd have probably got main event at Mania Thirty One. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Because there was some serious meth smoking going on in the writers' room. There, it's like Daniel Bryan's like white hot at the moment. You know what we're going to do with this? I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to bring back Batista and we're going to have him going for the championship. Like fucking why? Yeah. But they they do that over there, don't they? They let the they let the person that you want to win lose and lose and lose and lose, and then it gets to the point where they actually get their win, and we're past it now. We're on to someone else. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like, "Oh, oh this tie's broken. Let's throw it away." Yeah. 
Yeah. It's like WWE have got a well documented history of saying, no, 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 I don't care if you care, you, you know, cheering for this guy. This is the guy that you should be like. And it's like you're doing it at the moment with that LA night. I mean, I, honestly, apart from like AEW chants and, and, and things at Wembley, LA nights, yeah, is over. Like that was yeah. what people were shouting in the in the crowd and stuff. And like coming out of it in there. Um, and it was an AEW event, and I'm like, LA Knight's over as fuck, basically. Like, you know, but a lot of people were chanting it. Um, but I think they've missed, well, they've not missed the book, the, the, the shot with him, but if they're not going to hit it soon, they're going to miss it. Oh, they've got, at the moment, from what I've watched, they've got Miz running him down now. So, yeah. Like, you know, Miz being Miz. So I think that's going to lead to, you know, something further down the line for LA Knight. Well, yeah, I just, I don't understand. It's like the Michael Cole thing. I don't understand what people see in the Miz. I just don't get it. Um, I used to, I, I, I'll be full, fully honest, I owned at one point a Miz t-shirt, the baseball one that I'm awesome. I had that. I, I was there for his Mania run, uh, you know, his Mania and main event. Me and uh, producer Rick watched that live. I was happy. I was happy at that point because somebody beat Cena. That's all I wanted uh, <laughs> in my life at that point. But um, now I'm just like, why? Like, I couldn't see any other promotion apart from TNA actually wanting to sign him. Like, if he got released tomorrow, where is he going? Like, yeah. AEW a- don't want him. New Japan won't have him. AEW don't need him. They've got MJF. <laughs> <laughs> a less famous miss. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, who do you hate more than a fucking guy in Burberry? Yeah, I'm still right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a guy in a white cowboy hat with sparkly glasses on. Um, <laughs> Does he have a guitar that fires fireworks as well? Yes, yeah. Do you not like yes. him either? Does he ride a horse sometimes? Is he the world's greatest lover? <laughs> I've never seen him on a horse, thank God. Were you happy with him getting his comeuppance then at All In? Sorry to go back to that a sec. I, but... d- I just didn't want to see him, basically. <laughs> were, you, uh, were you just I mean, fuming when he came out? Like, ah, yeah, I was... Uh, follows me around. Because, well, I mean, uh, uh, Shivani was... I'll tell you what I did do, right, which was smart, smart, businessman smart. I took a pair of um, binoculars with me. And I could see perfectly. It was brilliant. Nobody around me brought a pair. Everybody was a little annoyed yeah. that there was like a pillar in the way. Uh, <laughs> of the, for the, but, but, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it was at Wembley. It was bound to rain at some point. So they had to put a sort of canvas over the top, a, a, a covering over the top of the ring, like, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, it was sort of in the way a little bit. You couldn't really see, but in, through the binoculars, I could see everything. And I watched most of the event through a pair of binoculars. I was fine with that. I knew I was going to be doing something like that anyway. Um, but yeah, what was he going to? But uh, what was he going to say? What were you saying? Oh, but uh, the Jeff Jarrett when he came out, yeah, I put them in my pocket and I just sat there arms folded, much like that I did through the Fuzzy song. Uh, <laughs> I sat there arms folded oh. whilst everybody around me stood up singing that at full pelt. Um, but I was sat near some disabled people, so there we go. <laughs> He should have lip synced that performance. Because, oh. Yeah, it was a bit it was a bit rough. It was a bit rough. But CM Punk, though. Yeah. Let's, talk, let's go back to that guy. Yeah, let's go back to Punk. Let's go back to Punk. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. What do you reckon then? I, I'm not, I, I'll be honest, right? I am not... I'm not fully out of him in my, my head. I, there's a part of me that thinks... He's going to turn up at the Royal Rumble. It's that time of year. He's that annoyed. Apparently, there'll be a podcast dropping pretty soon about like his exit and everything like that. So, you know, will that land him in legal trouble? I don't know. Does he have a non-compete clause? We don't know. Tony Carr wouldn't say. So, there's part of me that really thinks he's going to beat the Rumble. They're going to give him a mania main event. It probably won't be against Seth Rollins because he's come out and said he doesn't want him in the locker room. Um, <laughs> but 
You could get a cold, you could get a Uso, whichever one it is. Yeah. You could get a Miz. Oh. They could they could say, yeah, we'll give you a main event and it's versus the Miz. That'd be fucking hilarious. Um what I would love to see is CM Punk at the Broken Skull Ranch. Ooh, that, oh yeah. Yes. Now mm, yes. Oh that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Because he got a lot of respect for Austin, so he would like he wouldn't sort of play character or anything with him. You think he'd let Austin use real glass? <laughs> that's 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 what my question. Like, you know, if Austin was like, we're gonna use real glass here. <laughs> da, 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 yeah. What's what does Austin's <laughs> music sound like without the glass breaking? Wow. <laughs> that I mean to get annoyed about that. I mean, it all got so out of control that apparently it was all sorted out that Perry was going away on all day anyway or something and they didn't need to shoot this angle. And so he got the wrong... Up. Just, like, what? why is he going up to the camera and saying real glass? You know, like, what is that about? Come on, lad. He's just, on. Be, he's just being a dick, but yeah. grow up, let it go. Mm, yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, there's nothing I have a fight about. Exactly, exactly. He could literally I... walk past him and go, you're a dickhead. And Jack Perry would have just walked off. And that would have been that. That would have been it, the end of it. Yeah, and then they'd just be like, oh, well, I guess we don't like each other. Yeah, that's it. Well, we won't have to interact with you again. You'll yeah. be just on Dynamite now. Yeah. Um, there was, I uh... think um, there's been some... I mean, we all, we all obviously share in the group. I think there's been some absolute fantastic memes come out of the whole thing as well. This, this is one of the best <laughs> bits of it, totally. And yeah. My favourite was the one where um, Jack Perry's with his dad. Um, oh, yeah, it's it's like, like, in 14 years' time, this guy's going to choke you out. <laughs> it is amazing. The uh, it- the one I shared, the uh, local man ruins everything. That was, that was just my favourite one. Um there's a quote here from Jericho about it all. He's oh, no. sp- recently spoken on his podcast. He's not really saying much. He just says that he he was uh, he doesn't he doesn't want to dwell. I don't want to dwell on this or talk about it, but I should address it. CM Punk no longer with AEW. Wembley was his last match, which was a way to go out. If you're going to go out, I, I did speak to him briefly. I was going to do a Frankensteiner off the top. I know that he does that sometimes. So I was curious if he was going to do it. I went and talked to him for a bit, asked him if he was going to do it. He wasn't. I told him I was going to do the GTS with a straight face. And I think for a second he thought I was going to. I was joking, of course. I did see him that day. It's a regretful moment what happened, but Tony Khan makes the decisions. CM Punk was a big part of AEW from the time he was there here. And if you're going to go out, he went out on top by having his, that uh, this big match with Samoa Joe in a sold-out stadium. That's my thoughts on that. I mean, as always. Oh, as always. I tell you what, I did like um, uh, Mark Henry's comments on this, uh, which uh, okay. was said with a little bit of sarcasm in his voice. He said this on Busted Up Radio. Uh, the problem's gone now, <laughs> so there should be no more problems. Which, which, <laughs> which I thought was quite uh, interesting. So let's see. It's spicy. Yeah, yeah, and he, you know, and then he said, "It's time for the main event." <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, so, are we saying that like CM Punk's last match wasn't even the main event for AEW either in their biggest show? Opening match, I believe, wasn't it? O- opening. He was opening match, so he he doesn't even get to main event AEW. No, no, no. What a loser! I mean, at least he went out fighting his sort of big, one of his biggest opponents. I mean, obviously, I think you'd say Cena. Was his biggest opponent? Um, yeah, probably. you know, uh, uh, it, in his pantheon of biggest opponents, I think he's only really got three, two or three. I mean, again, at the start of that, he's linked with Cabana, but then there's Punk. Uh, sorry, then there's there's Joe in the ROH run, and he goes to WWE. And he's um, other than Cena, who did he really have a good run against? Um, Bray. Oh, Ray, I suppose. Jeff Hardy, we had that decent, oh, that. Jeff had Hardy, decent yeah, thing yeah. with him, yeah? Until yeah, Jeff Hardy yeah. ruined it. Yeah, yeah. And gave him, a Jeff Hardy. gave him more fuel. Gave him more fuel. The only reason I remember Ray is that 
him singing happy birthday to his daughter. Oh, which, yeah. Which was just amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. See, this, this, what we're talking about right now, this is what frustrates me and why I'm more disappointed than mad, is that there's great history and great promos and great, like, when this guy talks, you believe him. He's one of those ones that doesn't sound like, like, I, I hate the way that Seth Rollins delivers a line. Oh, God. It sounds to me like someone remembering his script and delivering a line. Whereas, yeah. like, CM Punk sounds like he's talking properly. You know, it, it, there's a realism to the way that he delivers a promo, even though it's planned and all that sort of stuff. He has good matches. He has good stories. He's got great ideas. And you know that he can be everything like that. But just, like, he's let this gang of kids who all think they know better because let's face it right they 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 took loads of gambles the 10 grand um seat are all in the original yeah. one they yeah. took the, the, the gamble there they took the gamble of actually putting a tv show on tn like obviously with tony khan and everything like that i know all, all that's but th these lot think oh we've gone for we, we we've eclipsed everything that in in wrestling that um, any other wrestling promotion has tried since WCW. Well, I, to be fair to to the Bucks and Omega, right? And, you know, Hangman helped out a lot. The T-shirt I'm wearing at the minute, Bullet Club T-shirt, right? Yeah. The, those guys helped make that a brand to the fact that a bloke in England knows what the Bullet Club are. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like, without a weekly TV show, without, like, a Western TV presence, really, especially not over here in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a bit of thing on Roku I could watch now, but uh, that's about it. Um, but I've been like in this Terry Funk deep dive I've been doing. I've been going back into Japan stuff, and I've been looking at the sort of newer stuff. And yeah, Devitt made it originally with you know Farley and and, and uh, Machine Gun Anderson um, Styles. You are. And then Styles, and Styles brought a bit of a notoriety to it, but with Styles came the Young Bucks, and, mm -hmm. and then and then Omega, and then the the brand of the Bullet Club took off massive, and the Bucks are a big part of that. They've got a big brand marketing, you know, and everything like that, and I think that helping that them help turn around New Japan. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just them. They had, you know, the three pillars were sort of uh, uh, the recent new three pillars, you know, Tanahashi and um, uh, what's he called, Akada and, and, and Nakamura yeah. at that point. Um, they were all hitting their peak over there. They were, they were full stride, full ahead, you know, IWGP heavyweight champion, international, intercontinental champion. You know, they, they were, they were at full peak, You've got Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks coming in as like Gaijin and whatever, and and and, and ruling the Bullet Club, and Bullet Club interfering and everything. Kenny wins the G One, the first like Westerner to do it since fucking Hulk Hogan, I think. Um, <laughs> some shit like that, you know. Right. So like they've, I think, had that experience of helping something grow, and then. Sure. They've 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 come with Tony Khan then to help him make some grow and they're you know in the trenches from the start and then all of a sudden they get this thing that can help them go over the next level but it comes in and it's like fuck you guys you are kids you know? <laughs> I'm yeah. not working with you it's, it's it, they've had you know? what three four years of success without CM Punk mm. that yeah. is I, I'm maybe getting my time frame I think, wrong I think three I think three, three years yeah, yeah, yeah three years without CM Punk right mm. and in those three years they got pay-per-views they were selling out arenas they were um they, they got a TV show which had you know ratings to the point where people were in, in Warner Brothers were putting money into the company you know they they've had all this success so why wouldn't they think that what they're doing is working why wouldn't they think that what they're doing is you know the right thing to do and then yeah. like you said and, and when jericho comes in and goes yeah all right i'll do I, i'm following suit with this 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 is a good idea Sting, like, I, name, I name him again sting comes in same thing christian comes in same thing like they all embrace what these lot are all doing yeah punk comes in 
and seems to embrace it at first, but then when something doesn't seem to go or uh, or, or things happen that he doesn't ex- believe should happen or whatever, it becomes this nuclear bomb that goes off. Mm. I, I I I see. I I really do see it as like a as these ki- these guys these kids they're acting like this because they they don't know different they don't know what they don't know what the rest of the, you know the rest of the wrestling world is for this level you know none of them really know it so they've never experienced it but what they're doing you know it never like the Bucks in TNA is one of the most torrid times in their career well, and that was. Yeah, and that yeah. was like the next level. That was the le- the rung below WWE at the time. At the time, right. yeah. I mean, Okada in TNA. Yeah, exactly. Tanahashi Jeez. in TNA. Yeah, jeez. Um, yeah. But then you've got, but they've done this, and it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And Moxley's come in, and you know he's embraced it. And you know Daniel Bryan's done the same thing. He's come in and embraced it as well. Regal came in, embraced yeah. it as well. It, it it just seems to me like. He, they, if they can look at it and go right this is how we can take what these guys are doing and we'll put our spin on it and make it better and he's going no wholesale change everything that everyone's doing is wrong this is unacceptable and if you think anything different to me i, I hate you for life mm-hmm. that, that seems to be the way that it that, yeah. that, that it's that, that's the way it's come across to me yeah 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 and no, yes right. yeah. a lot of the things they could do can be improved and yes a lot of the things they could, they do can be it's not perfect it's aw is not a perfect show and is not a perfect brand by any means i'm not saying that no. but you know except everyone else is working together to try and make it better not working against it you know yeah he's, he's got shades of like late stage w wcw kevin natch it's like everybody's learned what mm. makes a good promotion. And I think like probably our generation's got it quite unique because we've never really seen a major, you know, wrestling company come up from the ground up. No. Yeah. 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 And it's it genuinely does feel like it is kind of the Monday Night Wars all over again. And you're rooting for WCW, which in this case would be AEW every time, because they've They've taken sort of like elements from that as well. And everybody that we know of anyway, like you just said, Jay, it seems to be on board. They want to help make it work. But he's kind of wandered in like Kevin Nash saying, do you know what? This is going to be my equivalent to the fucking finger poke of doom or Scott Hall, Taser and Goldberg kind of thing. And yeah. yeah. We, we don't need that. We've been trundling along, along for like, you know, three or four years, you know, organically getting these ratings, you know, hiring the talent, using the talent. And yeah, sure, you're a big name, but look around the locker room. There's like six or seven other big names that are behaving themselves, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you can't, yeah, you couldn't tell it better. Yeah, it's... Yeah. You put you put Sting with Darby Allen, and I remember everyone being like, what, what on earth is this? But then after a while, it made perfect sense. Yeah. Because yeah. Sting made it make sense he did the things he probably like I said probably had these ideas come to him and he's like i don't like that i like this we'll do this let's tweak that probably like you know to to do what they're doing but put his twist on it and his knowledge and his experience on it and i think alan genuinely appreciates that as well yes and he's are, become better for it yeah alan is probably 1993 94 sting from wcw Mm-hmm. Definitely in the look. I mean, like I say, I think he wrestles like a you know um, super crazy um, nineteen ninety seven ECW super crazy or something like that. But um, he's definitely got that nineties sting vibe about him. What I mean, you could see that at the first Dynamite. There was kids who had the paint face painted like yeah. him and stuff like that. And he's cool, isn't he? Like he's just cool. <laughs> like yeah. He just looks cool. He acts cool and stuff. And, but he's become better because if you don't know, you guys remember, remember his first match was in the All In in, uh, or maybe even was not. Yeah, no, it, it might have been All In. It was um, him, Jimmy Havoc, and uh, the Bad Boy Joey Janela in a triple threat Cracker Barrel hardcore match. Yes, I remember that now. Yeah, the, the Cracker Barrel made me. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was pretty garbage. Let's, let's face it, right? Yeah. And I genuinely saw him and thought, skinny run, 
and also like just a another hardcore person like hmm. okay great i've seen this a million times before oh we, the to be fair the cop and drop on the apron the first time i saw that i nearly <laughs> i nearly yeah. went off. i was like this is horrible <laughs> but he's become better in the last four years and he's become better because of who he's got to work with in the sense that it's been sting um has been there with him and he's worked with great rest and like when when sting's not around he does stupid stuff like let um like powerhouse hobbs like throw him down the stairs at daly's place or put him in a body bag full of tacks and let brian cage throw him over right these are things that happen when sting's not around <laughs> yeah but when sting is around sting decides right i'm going to jump off this balcony i'm going to turn into new jack all of a sudden <laughs> like why is sting in his like 60s gone New Jack, that's the way for me. Yeah, let's uh, jump off the highest thing around here. <laughs> um, like, like watching Sting go for Taking a, a strange table. new places. Yeah, watching Sting go for a table at all in was absolutely mental. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, yeah I yeah. never thought I'd see that. Uh, to be fair, uh, but there we go. <laughs> I've seen. I'm, I was trying to think if I'd seen Sting wrestle before because I have seen. I went to TNA uh, in Manchester uh, at the MEN, and I know Steiner was there. I know. The Dudleys and, and Foley were there, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles. I can't remember if Sting was there or not. I'm, I'm, I'll have to ask producer Rick. Uh, if you can edit it in, Rick, edit in, you say yes or no now. Uh, 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 there we go. Uh, so <laughs> either or. Uh, <laughs> but I, I yeah. saw him in 1993 in the Cardiff Ice Arena for a WCW show against no Ravishing way. Rick Rude. No way. Oh, Main sure. event British Bulldog and Vader. Holy shit! What is that, was that the same tour that Arn Anderson and Sting and Sid Vicious had a bit of a fight on Blackburn? Could have been. It could have been <laughs> with the uh, with the infamous scissors. Yes, and uh, and the squeegee. Oh, but it, was, it, it was the tour when the I think did the was that the tour when the Bulldog won the title on one of them and then lost it the day after, and then but WCW never mentioned it or something. There's some there's some shenanigans like that. Something like that. Something, something daft like, like that definitely yeah, happened. You know. But yeah, I saw him like that, and then I've seen him um, when I went to see TNA at Impact Zone, and that was, yeah. and, you know, very cool. But like I said, it's just I don't know th- th- this is this is a this is a project which is taking time to get get going. Is still like it's four years. Let's let's be fair. WWE has been WWF when it really exploded was nineteen what eighty three eighty four. Um, Hogan beating yeah. Yeah, Iron yeah, Sheik, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say that's the that's the beginning of WWF becoming like that's that's when the big bang happens there, right? Yeah, that's yeah. when sports yeah. entertainment was born. Yes, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank God. And <laughs> God, like, so you've got from there till today. So was that forty-one years? Forty yeah. odd years, something yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm yeah, terrible yeah. at maths, by the way. So there, there, about your numbers. Yeah. It's never necessarily right. But it's like that, right? And then, so you've got a company that's been around for ten percent of that. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to constantly learn. They're going to constantly develop. And it's not going to be. The, it's not going to be this perfect um, scenario that someone like Punk, for example, who comes in in two thousand. So what's that? 20, 20 30 years mm, later from when yeah. from when the Big Bang happens. It's twenty odd years in, into that, right? There's that there's wcw there's ecw there was all these like this is how it works this is what happens this is how this goes we, and we've been established for a while and this is the, the the way that things work in these companies right yeah punk comes up into that jack perry hasn't hangman page hasn't I, they, mm, they haven't they haven't really come no. up through that you know what i mean like i know i know i know hangman's been in um new japan and stuff but yeah he was a he was a he wasn't you know, a star in New Japan. What I mean is like, no, it's not something that these guys, Darby Allen, um, you know, they, they've not been in that position like, before. Stri- yeah, no. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And they're learning how to do it as well. And they're used to, you know, uh, uh, carny independent people, r- r- you know, ripping them out, ripping them off and stuff. Yeah. Punk can't come into that and just assume that they all know exactly how etiquette should be from when the, the etiquette that he learned in 2010 and has done since then. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it, the expectancy is that punk should try and instill that in them by doing like, I say with sting with Darby Allen, helping him evolve, helping him grow, helping him develop. Do the same thing with people. That's what, yeah. that's what, 
you know, I mean, if he wants to be a locker room leader, which is what he's tried to be for oh, since yeah. Yeah. You know, back in the WWE days, right? That's what he wants to be. He's got the per- that was the perfect oh. clay to do it in. Yeah, beautiful, and he could have done that, but instead, back to the prick. But I think Jericho. Uh, I know Jericho had a bit of a word with the locker room didn't he, when he was champion um, because I can't remember what it was about now. Um, but it was, I think, it was a couple of those early scuffles within AEW. You know, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, he had a bit of a word to sort of calm him all down. But I think you know, space space Karen's platform exists. Uh, X, formerly Twitter. Uh, so, you know, um, people can go in there and say whatever they want and people can respond to it and in, in, inevitably wrestlers go on there and say whatever they want and other wrestlers respond to it or see it. And uh, I think this will not be the first person we see sort of have a bit of a meltdown about what somebody said or done on the internet slash, you know, um, backstage. I think it's the first time we've, publicly seen it all unfold and yeah. i think when and if the wembley footage the cctv footage from the gorilla position ever gets released um which apparently there is a lot of because they were where the gorilla was was where the interview football is um after a match basically yeah. so there's just cctv and cameras all over that place so uh, apparently, yeah, there's lots of footage of it. So if we ever see that, you know, I think that'll paint him in a, in a worse light than he is. But I would also say I don't think you should ever say he won't ever be in WWE again because look at the people they brought back. Uh, and, and Vince isn't there as much, maybe, especially not at the moment because he's had back surgery, so he's not there at all. But Triple H is more in charge. You know, Gunther's going to beat the Honky Tonk Man's record. <laughs> so things are changing, at least. Uh, but I think uh, I wouldn't count him out being in the Royal Rumble or being popping up soon on in WWE TV at all. At all. Just so they can fucking... Because, like say, we're in a war, we're in a, uh, another Monday Night Wars, but it's, you know, Monday slash Wednesday night. It's It's all about eyeballs. It's not about who's watching what at what time now. It's just about who's watching what. And you, you, are you watching us? Are you watching them? Because if you go on Twitter and, and look at wrestling chitter-chatter on Twitter, it is incredibly divided. And even if you go on, you know, certain, I, I'm on a wrestling board, you know, messaging board or whatnot. And that has been completely divided over who's right. Are you on, and it is, are you on the elite? side or are you on punk side and uh ultimately i'm just here to watch the world burn <laughs> i think something else that you might have to factor in is perhaps punk is carrying a little bit of the old school with him because yeah he did you know sort of come up in wwe sort of like was it late 2000s mid to late 2000s kind of thing yeah but he'd already done like for want of a better phrase, he'd already paid his dues in other companies, you know, obviously notably Ring of Honor and that. And like, I'm not presuming to speak for him, but potentially you may think that like, you know, guys like Jungle Boy, they've not done the hard yards kind of thing. And maybe that kind of stuck with him a little bit. And Mm. I'm I'm not trying to defend him. Like I see like an alternative point of view. Like maybe now he's the, the old schooler, that he looked up to when he first came into into WWE. Yeah, I, I think there is a part of that uh, and a, a big element to that. Um, and let's not forget, he was in a faction with Raven before he joined uh, WWE. So uh, that's going to put miles on you. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, the, the 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 end of this is like the thing for me on this is that I don't really think anyone's in the right. There's a, there's so many people that are in the wrong that should have and could have dealt with all of this a lot better yeah you know what i mean you've got you you, you've got if you if you think that he's muscled cabana out for example right and it is it is the elite that um that were mad at him for it your evps Hmm. 
you know what I mean? Do, yeah, do, do, do your job then. Yeah. You know, you, you've got these, you've got these scenarios where they, there's so many scenarios where a conversation can happen with people and no conversations happen. And like I said, I don't, mm. I, I said earlier, I don't think the backstage area is that big. And I don't think that people don't interact and they can't talk. Mm. Um, and the fact that these guys have all done these things without actually just having chats and just airing their grievances and doing things like, you know, like grown ups should do. Yeah. I think um, is is the biggest sort of disappointment <clears throat> in this that I have really genuinely for the whole lot. But I am the reason I'm one thing though I am glad that he's at least gone now is that I can hopefully get back to watching AEW and enjoying AEW and yeah. not thinking about backstage like, I, shit. Yeah, me and my mate, me and my mates, when we uh, obviously with you guys in our wrestling chat and my other mates with the, my wrestling chat with them. You have other it, friends. I do. Sorry. Oh my god. Should I leave them? <laughs> out, out. <laughs> I would integrate them, but then they'd just be bickering. Um, everyone would just be fighting over me, and I just can't. I can't take that. It's like saying um, you're in another stable in another federation. How dare you? Yeah, settle down, Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, it's it is very much like we used to talk about the show and the matches and the. The, you know the, the storylines and what what we're enjoying, what we weren't enjoying, all that you know, all that good stuff. Yeah. And now ever it's... since ever since brawl out, it's literally been. What's are they going to come back? Is, is Punk going to end up in a? You know what Tony should do? They should they should, they should get them together and they should have a. It wouldn't the feud be brilliant and get FTR in and the blood and guts and let's have this booking thing and this happen and that yeah. happen. Uh, and uh, you know what? Like, nah, I don't really. I. I in retrospect, I think it's stupid to want it. Like, because yeah. there's a load of people online right now that think that this is a work, that, that mm. this is a storyline thing, <laughs> and a, that, no, that he's coming back and he's going to come back in a bit, and it's going to be some sort of him mm. and anyone else that's disgruntled with AEW and the old the old school versus the. I'm like, yeah, it work, that works tremendously. And yeah. you know, th- look back at all the other old school versus new school. Um, was it Millionaires Club wrestling. versus the New Blood? Yeah, that was pretty garbage. That there was, was an awful. old school, new school in that FWA that I used to watch. That was yeah. garbage. Yeah. It's yeah. just, you know, but I, I just want to get rid of all that. And I want to talk back to, it'd be nice to go back to talking about week to week. This is what I think they should do. You know, that kind of fun fantasy booking. Well, I mean, that's thing. what it was like yeah. when he first came back in. When he uh, when he first came back in, I think a, sort of a month into it or something like that, the internet changed. And all of a sudden, they didn't have their big white whale, the guys who like to sort of like, you know, RC and Punk chant that to destroy a show or whatever like that. Those types of guys didn't have their sort of, oh, is Punk going to come back to WB? Is Punk going to, you know, appear on this show? Is he going to come in? He was already in a show and he wasn't, you know, going anywhere. He was a, a champion, if you will. So those guys were happy. Everybody, and, and you had other things to chat about online. Now it will be again going back to is Punk coming back? Is Punk going to be in this guy? Is yeah. in this show at that show? Oh, he was at this show under a hood, being the referee for five minutes. Like it's going to be that kind of shit again. And I'm just, I, I'm not asked in the slightest about it. I just, I hope that this explosive interview that whatever he does, he comes out and he, he says. This is me done with wrestling now. I'm going away, I, you know. And he, uh, but even if he says, because there's no fucking way he's going to Japan. If he can't handle Jack Perry and Ryan Namath calling him soft online, I do not think he could do uh, Mitsunoru uh, <laughs> Suzuki uh, in his face, you know, uh, strong <laughs> style. I don't think he can handle strong style. Uh, let's put it that way. You know, he's not Eddie Kingston. <laughs> if you have if his UFC career is anything about it, right. yeah, <laughs> he can't it. handle strong style. I think oh, Anoki had come back from the dead uh, and walked down the <laughs> aisle and, and and start that match uh, as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh Jesus, Jesus! Right, let's end it there, boys. Thank you very much, Jordan, for coming in and bitching about the punk with us. It's always fun to see you, sir. Thanks very much, Mister Funk, Mister Ten, uh, Very Tonk. Uh, let's do the managers next month, mate. Let's yes. stick with that one. And and two of the, a couple of the best, couple of the worst managers of all time. 
or chat managers, valets, and associates, and advocates, and the like. Um, yes, I have been. I have been watching a couple, actually, to be fair. So I, have a, I have a few. And uh, we'll get uh, Jakey Boy from uh, Last What's All Libra on as well. What is El Beanzo from the faction? Oh, come on. Uh, thanks very much, everybody. We're now going to listen to an orchestral version of uh, Cult of Personality to uh, give the, the CM Punk the full butchery. Until next time. See you later, everybody. Bye. 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 I have to go now. My planet needs me.